Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello and welcome to the video for what is camera modifier. So a camera modifier is something you can apply to your camera manager and it modifies the camera. So let me show you. In this case, I have our field of view changing over time. As you can see here, it looks kind of like it's going in and out. And then I have a chromatic aberration effect on my player itself using post-process settings. So let's look at a camera modifier itself and how we would create one and then how we would use it. We'd want to go to blueprint class. You want to search for modifier, camera modifier, whatever you want. You're looking for camera modifier as the base parent class. There are other ones. We want camera modifier. Select it. We'll name it whatever we want. So we'll go with camera modifier new one because my old one's called test that we're using. Now, if we open it up, it's got some values in here. We have our defaults and we want to look at these for a second. But basically, we're going to have two events and functions that we're going to be able to override to modify our camera at runtime. Now we have a debug checkbox if we want to enable debug. We have the ability to make this modifier exclusive based on the priority. Zero priority through 255 priority. The higher the priority, the higher the order it's applied. Exclusive makes it only this priority. So if you want to stack different modifiers, each modifier may be a different effect. Sometimes you may want them exclusive. You have an alpha in and an alpha out, alpha out for time. So when we apply this, how long does it take to apply? And when we get rid of it, how long does it take to go away? That's what these values are for. Now, the way this works is we have two functions we can override over here. We go to functions, override. We have modify post process and modify camera. So if you want to modify the camera or modify the post process, override one of these two values, these functions, and then you can do stuff. Now I'm going to go ahead and delete these. One thing to note is if you override, it's going to go ahead and overwrite it. We're going to close this down and we're going to look at our existing camera modifier that I've got set up here. And you can see I've overridden both of these, overriding the post process and the camera. Now the post process is simple. It gives you the delta time, time since the last update in case you want to use it. And then you output a new blend weight and a post process setting stack. In this case, I want these post process to blend 100%, so 1.0. And then you set up which settings you want. In this case, you want to apply a post process to here. So all I did was drag off, did a make post process settings, and I was able to set up what I want. If you've ever worked with this node, you'll know that basically it sets it up in here, which pins you want to show up over here. For example, maybe I want to adjust the temperature. Check it. Now we have a temperature for the pin. Maybe I want to adjust the color grading saturation. Now it's a pin over here. In my case, I have chromatic aberration intensity. And that's why we have such a big look. We have our chromatic aberration with a value of 50. If I wanted multiple items in here, bloom, all your post-process items are in here. You can mix and match as many as you want, plug it in, and there you go. It's going to go ahead and override, and you're going to have these post-process settings. If I want, I can disable this. We'll go and run this. And now you notice my post-process settings are no longer being applied. I'm not overriding this at all because it's not executing. Now, you don't really want to do that with the modify camera. Let's go ahead and uncheck Modify Camera. We have this on, but we're not really doing anything. For the most part, if you have things plugged in and running, you're going to run into a problem. Let me disable Post Process so we can see this easier. And if we have this hooked up, we're going to have the ability to see our delta time. We have the location of where the camera currently is, the rotation of where the camera currently is, and then the field of view that we currently have. If we don't actually plug anything in, so for example, we can see here we have our new location, new rotation, and new FOV, you should be able to guess what's going to happen. Well, we're actually going to take our camera and return back no for the locate, well, 000 for the location, 000 for the rotation, and no FOV. So at the worst, you need to make sure you pass through anything you're not going to use. So that way you have the proper settings for the modifier. In this case, I was only overriding the FOV here, so we want to make sure that's plugged in, and our rotation and location are passed through, so our existing location and rotation are then returned and used. In this case, I'm just simply grabbing the time, modulating it, returning back a FOV, so it kind of looks like it's pulsing in and out. But you can, of course, adjust the location and rotation as needed. 
that's pretty much it. That is a camera modifier. It allows us to add a post-process effect and modify the camera once we apply it. Now, applying it would be applied using like the add new modifier right here, and it applies it to our stack, to our camera manager. There are other nodes. You can remove it. You can find them if there's any applied to it. You can enable and disable modifiers. You can check if it's disabled, and you can get the view target. And these nodes are covered separately. One thing to note is this is applied to our player camera manager, the modifier. So we can actually, if we're going to override our player camera manager, we can set default camera modifiers. So in this case, by default, you're going to come with, let me get rid, where's the delete button? There we go. It's going to come default with the camera shake, so we can adjust the camera shake on our camera. But you can always add a new item, add on, for example, our camera manager test, camera manager, camera modifier test. And now by default, if we use this player camera manager, it's going to have this new camera modifier applied. And of course, you apply camera managers in the player controller under the player camera manager class. Those are all covered separately. They all have their own videos. But basically, the player camera manager class is set in the controller. You can make a new player camera manager to make new camera modifiers that come out by default. Or you can use the nodes to add new camera modifiers. And the camera modifiers allow you to override a function for modifying the post-process stack, as well as modifying the camera's location, rotation, and field of view. And that is what our camera modifier is.